Father God, as we come into your presence, we first want to acknowledge and glorify you. How marvelous and how wonderful your love is towards us. Father, we are still at some point in the midst of all of the effects of COVID, but yet, Father, there's some individuals that have really come through it and done well, and we rejoice for that. Lord, there's others. They've come through it physically okay, but emotionally it's, it's, it's a trial for them. We pray, Father, that your peace would rest upon these individuals. 
And then, Father, we think of those that have been stricken by the illness. And, Lord, they're, they're dealing with some long-term effects. Father, I, I pray for Tony Davis and Cindy. As, Father, as they still deal with uh, issues related to the positive diagnosis they received so many months ago. Father, we know of our, our former pastor in our Hispanic congregation, Reverend Marena. Lord, uh, we know he's still struggling with oxygen levels. But Father, we know that there are many, many families who have succumbed to the illness. And Father, they're still dealing with the tragic loss. So Lord God, we are praying that you would be the miracle working God you are. Bring about healing, bring about health, bring about hope. Father, may we be strong and courageous through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, we, we thank you for the way that you have been uh, with Paula as she uh, came through her procedure well and the doctor's given her a release, and so we are so thankful. Father, we pray as we dealt with this last week 9-11 reminded again Father of 19 years ago the tragic outcome in New York City in a field in Pennsylvania and here at our Pentagon Father I pray for our fire and rescue workers our police men and women Father for that day proved they will run into when everybody else is running away from. And so, Father, we pray for courage. We pray for hope. We pray for healing. Father, for I understood that every so many minutes, there are still people dying from the effects of what happened at Ground Zero. And so, Father, we're, we're praying that you would just continue to work healing in their lives. Father, I pray for our men and women who serve in the military around the world. Father, for they are those that are willing to sacrifice. Lord, many are here. Many are in our congregation. But Father, there are those that are traveling and those are in dark and, and destitute places. Reveal yourself to them, Father, as a God who's always with them. Lord Jesus, we pray for our college students today, not just ours, but all. Father, we know there's been a few colleges that have had to shut down, and others, there's been some drastic outbreaks, and so, Father, we pray for our kids that are away. We pray for Derek and Julia, Kevin and Kimberly, Shannon, Christina, Ty and Elena, CJ. Lord, those... Uh, there might be some others that are out away from the area going to school. We're praying for them, Father, their health, their safety, their development as young adults. But, Father, we have some college students locally like Abby and Ethan and some others, Father, that they're, they're trying to figure it out either online or partial classes. Father, we think about our parents who are trying to work either at home or at the office and yet their children are having to be home behind a computer. Lord, the teachers who are trying to figure this thing out. Lord Jesus, we've been talking about spiritual formation. We've been talking about us being conformed into your image, into this communion with you. And so, Father, I pray that, that all of these, Lord Jesus, would be drawn near to you in these difficult days. And so, Lord Jesus, to you be all glory, honor, and praise. Father, anybody else that's out there with some kind of procedure they're recovering from or soon to be going into, we pray for them. Lord, uh, I don't remember if I mentioned Doug Songer and the results from his procedure, and we're thankful that, that it looked good, and hopefully he will be painless as he comes through this thing. Father, right now, just pour your spirit not just among us, but in us. And that today, by the time we leave this place, that we could say, our God is alive. Amen? 
and he was with us and is going to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Yes, ma'am. You have a testimony to give? Do I have a runner? Is there a young person that could be a runner? Sam, could you be a runner for me? You are my hero, Sam. We want everybody to hear it. Even if they're out there in Zoom land. I, I understand Zoom's having some difficulty this morning, so maybe it's just on Facebook Live they're going to hear this. But go ahead. Can I brag about our Lord Amen. today? Perfect, Luke, that song. How marvelous, how wonderful. And he is. You know both of our sons did not have a job. But God is so faithful. And I humbly say this with all of my heart. And I give him praise and glory. Both of them have jobs. That's a miracle. It's a Amen. miracle. He is performing miracles today. Never give up. Because as a mom, I love my kids so much. And when they are suffering, so do we. And you know what? Christ is the same way. When we are suffering, so is he. He did so much for us. And I give him honor, praise, and glory for what he did. And yes, I'm bragging on my Abba Daddy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's somebody else right next to you there, Sam. Yeah. I want to praise the Lord for bringing me through my surgery safely. Um, Gosh, it's so awesome to be able to see clearly. <laughs> I can't wait to do the other eye. But the doctor told me going in, uh, since I had had LASIK twice, that there was a 60 to 75% chance of getting uh, the prescription spot on. And I had it done on Wednesday, and on Thursday, he tested me and he said, you're almost 2020. So, <laughs> so it's exciting, and I'm, I praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody else up here? Uh, don't breathe. I'm taking my mask off. <laughs> um, I know most of you, if not all of you, know that my daughter in love, Julia, was, a di was diagnosed with um, ALL, it's a leukemia, in February. She's, of course, went through all kinds of chemo and radiation and bone marrow biopsies, which is not the greatest thing. It's very painful. And, and bone marrow transplants, right? She got a transplant. Um, this week, sh she told me that um, she received amazing news. The doctor thought he'd have to do a biopsy, uh, but he did not. He just went with the blood work, and he was hoping for at least 90% donor. She's 100%. So we all, our family, praise God for that. that. That all began just about the time COVID was cut loose, or was it a year ago? Uh, this past February, so just that's before. What I thought. Just that's before. what I thought. So yes. it could have been horrible, and I'm sure the experience has been tough, but praise very, the Lord. Very, very much so, especially when you have seven children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord. My God is good. Fantastic. Thank you for your prayers. Amen, amen. Anybody else? We've got time for one more. We got time for one more. Somebody want to praise the Lord? Maybe it's nothing as amazing as that. Over here. Uh, I just wanted to share um, an experience where I really seen God work, um, just in a in a miraculous way. Um, we had a pretty tough go the last few months. Um, passing of my mother-in-law. Uh, a couple weeks later, passing of my dog, and then a couple weeks later, passing of my dad. Um, it was, it was really tough on our family, and uh, um, when my dad passed, he was, a, he was a planner and had everything scripted out with how he wanted everything done. However, his wife um, suffers from severe MS, hmm. and um, he was the primary caretaker for her. And uh, she was, he didn't have the heart. Um, in, in his final days, he was really, really weak. Um, he had lost over 100 pounds in, in less than a year and just was just a shell of himself and uh, his wife. Um, he, didn't, he didn't have the heart to do 
what probably should have been done sooner. He, at the very last moments, took care of her with everything he could. Um, about a month before he passed away, she had fell down, and uh, he couldn't pick her up. And so she ended up going to a rehabilitation facility to try to help give her some strength. He passed away while she was there. And, uh, you know, so she, she really didn't have that closure. She got to come home and see him, but he was already gone, um, laying on the couch. So this is where I see God, where I've seen God really start to work in my life. Um, well, actually, he's always worked in my life, but this is one point where it just, it just really stood out for us. Um, I didn't know what to do about Tara. That's her name. Uh, and so as I was planning for my dad, Tara wanted to come home, but there was, there was nobody at home for her to tell, help do what my dad had done. And I struggled with that. And so going through what I was going through with my father, my heart was really heavy about Tara. What was I going to do with Tara who could not take care of herself? She just, she couldn't feed her. She could feed herself, but she would choke while she ate. She couldn't do the tasks that you would need to do to live on your own. And so we looked at possibly bringing somebody home to live with her, but that would have eaten up every last bit of money that she had. Um, so I, I just, it, it just, it was beating me down and it was eating at my heart. And thankfully for um, Chuck and Brent and Scott uh, for checking up on me the entire time. Um, I, at my dad's funeral, I talked about angels being sprinkled through his life. And people that we don't really realize are there, that are placed in our lives, are placed in our lives for a reason. And as he was becoming sick, these people became more and more evident where they stood up and they helped him. They did things for him. The same came true with Tara. Uh, he, as, she, as, as this was happening, I didn't know what to do. I called a, an assisted living place for her. And they just started asking me all kinds of questions, and I started crying because I was just so overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. Um, I couldn't answer the questions that they were asking, and I just, I just didn't know. And then all of a sudden, a friend said, hey, call this person here. And so I called that person, and she's like, Rodney, we will help you through this, and we'll take care of this. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, that lady sat down and started talking with Tara, and together they found out that there was an assisted living place that she could live and she could thrive in. And then it was, um, she wanted to come home. And I was like, Tara, you, you, you can't. And then God touched her heart, and she started to appreciate the fact that this, this home, this facility, was, was good for her. And then it became that um, it was, I went to visit her, and then all of a sudden she's got a letter from her hospital saying that, they're gonna, that she has to leave like now because her insurance is no longer going to pay for her to be in that rehabilitation facility. So again, I'm just, I'm, I'm just struck with all this weight. And then I called the, the ho it, just, it just so happens that I called the hospital or the, the assisted living place. And they're like, Mr. Neese, we, we'll take care of this. We've got this all, we will get her in here and we will take care of everything. We've already done an initial assessment. And, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing how God has not only introduced me to these people that I never would have even thought of, led me to this apartment facility and helped me get her situated to the point where she's being told she can no longer stay here, but now she can stay here. And then I was like, well, how am I going to get all of her stuff? And then just people rallied around us, and we were able to move all of her stuff into this assisted living facility within just a short day. And the whole time I was sitting there, and I'm like, in the midst of all this loss of life, all this grief and everything, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, you know, I've been calling out to you this whole time. And it's amazing to sit back and just see how much you're taking care of me and you're taking care of my family. And it was at that moment that I just started, anybody that's followed anything that I've put on Facebook, you'll see just this, this down slope of where I was. And then all of a sudden, just as God started working more and more and more, and I could see him more and more, I just started coming up out of that. And I said, you know what? Rather than sitting there and, and focusing, like Chuck said, rather than focusing on the negative things that constantly are happening in my life, I'm going to start focusing on the good things that are going on. Amen. Amen. And so all these things that I'm seeing, all these, these positive things that are now starting to happen with Tara and starting to find these ways forward, I just started to just, just express my thanks and, and my love to God more and more. And then, you know, here, and then it was to the point of, I'm, because it wasn't even just that, it was like, Right after that happened, then somebody did identity theft with me. Mm -hmm. 
So people are opening up credit cards and they stole my identity. So now it's like, oh goodness, how much more can I possibly take? And then I said, you know what? I'm not going to let anybody steal my joy. I'm tired of letting that happen. And I'm going to start stopping that. I'm going to stop letting that happen. And I'm going to start being a joy to others. Um, and this has been weighing on my heart to share this. And so it's just a really good opportunity to do so because it was just amazing to watch God work in that dire of circumstances with everything and just as I was just so overwhelmed with life and to see that he did not forget me, he did not leave me, but he helped me through that entire time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's so true that uh, life sometimes really stinks, doesn't it? But God is with us, and, and if we could just look and see it, and so thankful, thank you for that testimony. Thank you for that that truth and we need we need each other um, I appreciate the life bands and life groups that continue to meet online and such and and we're gonna be uh, pulling the um, regathering team back together hopefully this week for a, a briefing and a meeting uh, we want to begin to look at uh, what does it look like if we were to have children's church what does it look like if we were to have uh, some small groups begin to meet um, we are going to be expecting to have high protective uh, procedures in place, but uh, our regathering team is kind of the initiating factor, and then we'll meet, the board meets the following Monday night. So we'll see what we come up with to see what we can do. Um, I know this, that uh, we can't do children's church if we don't have children's church workers. I know that for sure. So uh, Pastor Luke was in the back. His wife, Jenna, is back there. So Jenna, you wave your hand. Oh, come on, stand up and wave your hand. We want to see you, Jenna. <laughs> and uh, so anyways, we'll, we'll need to get information to them if you're interested. We may start with doing the music up here and then having them go down for a message or something. But, uh, but again, we just need to make sure we're doing everything appropriately so we're not charging into the unknown with just doing something silly, right? So be praying for us as we begin to meet and talk about that. And also out there on the foyer in the, in the welcome desk is our, our masks, if you're interested. Uh, we're asking for a $5 donation if you wish, um, but uh, we'd love to be able to wear these masks out in, this, out in the community and people going, what's Woodbridge Naz? Well, you can tell them about your church. Um, well, we have got a, a conclusion of the scripture and prayer portion of spiritual formation today. Um, everything we've been talking about is really going to be brought together in this message. And so I hope that as you hear it, you'll catch all of those things that were going on and, and, and what we we're trying to say. So in this series of messages of spiritual formation, we basically define spiritual formation as Romans 8.29. For those God foreknew... He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So our goal in God's eyes is to be conformed into the image of Jesus. That's what spiritual formation is. It's the process of being formed. It's not the snap your fingers and abacadabra and it's all over with kind of thing. It's the process. It's the journey that we have to be allowing Christ to conform himself in us. What does it look like, Pastor? What does this image look like? Well, it's not a body. It's not us becoming a deity. It's having Jesus so completely filling our lives that he begins to reveal himself through us, that others begin to see Jesus in our life. I like to use terms like relationship or intimacy when we're talking about spiritual formation. It's this relationship with God. It's this intimacy with Christ. And, and experiencing God is what we want. Some, so many times we want religion. We want the thing to do to make it happen and then get it over with so I can get on with the rest of my life. But that's not experiencing God. That's just religiosity. Experiencing God is understanding that while we're sleeping, while we're waking, while we're eating, while we're traveling and while we're working and while our kids are in school, God is with us and he wants to develop himself in us. And as we talked about reading the Holy Scriptures and praying, these are disciplines or practices that we can do 
to help us form his image in us. We talked about reading Holy Scriptures for information. It's important to read the Scriptures, to gather the information. I want to challenge you to read from cover to cover. Remember, 15 minutes a day, you can read through the entire Holy Bible in one year. 15 minutes a day. You can do that. If you want to take the weekends off, you're around 19 minutes, Monday through Friday. And you can take the weekends off if you want. But you can read through the Scriptures. Get the information into your head. But I also talked about reading for inspiration. This idea of being inspired, God inspiring us, bringing to life the Holy Scriptures. It's a whole different approach than reading for information. So to read to be inspired, I shared with you the kind of concept called Lectio Divina. It's, it's a divine reading or a spiritual reading of the Holy Scriptures. The process might seem strange. It's different than just reading 15 minutes for information. It's a matter of reading the passage of Scripture two or three times out loud, speaking it out loud, not just in your head, and, and in using different translations, two or three different translations, letting the Scripture move beyond your mind, which we're doing in reading for information, Remove, moving beyond our mind and into our heart. And beyond reading, we want to reflect, what is the Scripture saying? What is God saying to us through the Scripture? So as we're reading, we're reflecting, we're asking God. We're not getting any study aids out. We're not getting any, any commentaries or out anything. We're just saying, God. So now we're moving in this reading and for inspiration. We're moving into this idea of praying. God, what are you trying to say to me? And then we begin after reading and reflecting we're asking God to reveal what he wants in our life. Whatever is re revealed, we make it ours. Boy, I know that my brother, he needs this. Boy, my, my cousin could use this. My coworker could use. You've got to move beyond that stuff. God, you're saying something to me. What are you saying to me? Pray that God's Holy Spirit would reveal what the truth of that scripture is to you. And the fourth R of Lectio Divina, there's reading, reflecting, revealing, and then there's the responding. Being willing to allow yourself to be formed. This is reading for transformation. I want to no longer to be the person I used to be. And so, you see, religiosity is a matter of what do I need to do to get God off my back? What do I need to do so I feel better about myself? Religiosity is about, I'm supposed to be doing something, so what is it I'm supposed to do? See, that, that is unsatisfying relationship with God. What God wants is us to be in a heartbeat motion with Him. God, your Scripture's speaking to me. What are you trying to tell me? How am I going to do that? How am I going to have the courage to move beyond what I'm doing and how I'm treating others? We want to read for information for inspiration and transformation. And as you move into that element, we talked about prayer. Now, for a moment, you're going to say, Pastor, you've talked about all this stuff over the last month and a half. Why are you doing it again? Well, I believe it's very important. These messages that I've been talking about in spiritual formation may have been some of the most important messages I've been preaching because it's not about what do I need to do to please God? How can I relate to Jesus Christ in the present reality and find that he is shaping and forming himself inside of me. A couple of weeks ago I talked about practicing prayer. We looked at the Lord's Prayer. We saw that the Lord's Prayer is about relationship. It's about seeking and asking and knocking. It's about praying his kingdom come, not my will be done. And we, we looked at the friend at midnight and sometimes we think God is that friend at midnight where we got to keep pounding on the door. God, wake up. God, get out of bed. I've got somebody who's come visit. I need some bread. God, God. And we think that we have to bombard God's throne to get him to do what we want. And, and the passage is telling us there in Luke 11, God is not like our friend at midnight. He's going to get up in, because he wants to save his face, so to speak. He wants to save his honor. But God wants to already work with you. You don't have to ask him again and again and again 
Now, we may feel the pressure. We may still feel burdened. We go back to God, not because he didn't remember or didn't hear us. We go back to God and say, God, we're still burdened by this. Set me free from this burden, God. And then we looked at practicing the presence of God. We saw that prayer is communication with God. Communication is two-way. Too many times our prayer becomes, God, do this, do this, do this, do this. Sometimes we think, I'll say, Scott, how you doing? He says, well, I'm doing all right. No, I need to know exactly how you're doing because I need to pray to God exactly how you're doing. That's really a selfish way to pray. Does God really need me to tell him how Scott's doing? No. I really want that, so actually, here, be careful. Now, be careful. This is what we can be guilty of. Sometimes we want to know what Rodney's going through so that we can tell others. Not so they could pray, but so that we could tell others what Rodney's going through. God doesn't need us to do that. All I need to know is Rodney's in pain, and I can say, God, you already know Rodney's in pain, but now that I know he's in pain, I'm in pain. I want you, God, to reveal yourself in some way. This idea of practicing the presence of God, yes, we communicate to God those needs, but we all ought to be listening to God as well. God, what are you trying to speak to us? That's that communion with God. We talked about prayer being in alignment with God. Remember, because a lot of times we go to God and we say, God, get yourself in alignment with my needs. <laughs> Have you ever done that? You say, God, this is what I need for you to do. Hey, we've all been there. And it's really a part of the process of asking, seeking, and knocking. It is part of the process. But really, prayer is the process of us getting in alignment with God. God, these are my burdens. These are my pains. These are my worries. But God, speak to me about who you are and what you're doing in my life and how that you can be a help to me. It's, it's aligning me with God, beginning to identify ourselves with God. And last week, I talked about prayers, building relationships. We can pray for others, and when we do, we begin to get a stronger relationship with them. We're praying for them on a regular basis. I said, you know, some of us have trouble remembering names. Start praying for people by names, and I guarantee you, you'll remember their name a little better. But you know what? Prayer is also for building bridges with those who we struggle with. I don't like that person. Well, pray for them. I don't like that person's politics. Pretty much I don't like anybody's politics. So there, I have to pray for everybody. I, I, don't, I don't like that person's point of view. I don't like the way that person's... Do, start praying for them. I don't like the way the fact that person cut me off on the road. Pray for them. You may not be able to pray by name, but you can pray by license plate. Maybe car type. I know, we don't normally pray for those people, do we? We... Pray for people that do you wrong. Bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who are your enemy, the Scripture tells us. And so as we pray, you see this idea of spiritual formation and reading the Holy Scriptures in prayer. It's about being conformed into the image of Christ. Now I want to bring this to a culmination here. I want to talk to you about praying Scripture. Now some of you are saying, I don't understand what you mean praying Scripture, Pastor. See, I, I, don't, I don't think any of these things I've just talked to you about have to be done at different points in time. You can pray for, you can, you can read the Scripture for information. And as you're reading the Scripture for information, you can come across a passage that you can begin to pray in Lectio Divina. You can do spiritual reading as you're doing that reading. And then you can come to this place where you begin to pray Scripture. Praying Scripture is basically praying God's will back to Him. And you know what Scripture says? You can ask anything in accordance with His will and you can have it. Amen? So, so this idea of praying in accordance with His will. So we're going to practice this here. We're going to look at this and see how would you do that. So as I'm reading for information, I'm reading Luke chapter 4, and you'll put verses 18 and 19 up there, Terry. And I come to verses 18 and 19. As I'm reading it, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. 
because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We come across that, we're like, wow, that's, that's powerful. Jesus is speaking, and Jesus is saying these words, and then, then we can begin to say, well, I'm going to spend some time here. I'm going to begin to read this through Lectio Divina. I'm going to read it, I'm going to read it, and I'm going to read it out loud three times, and I'm going to find other translations, and, and I'm going to start reading this passage of Scripture out loud again and again. And as I do that, I begin to reflect, wow, the Spirit of the Lord was on Jesus. Hmm. He anointed Jesus to preach the good news to the poor. And reflecting, God, now I'm beginning to say, God, reveal, what are you saying through this passage of Scripture? You might be saying, well, this is a passage of Scripture about Jesus. Well, the question, the thing about reading Scripture and praying, it's about how does Scripture come alive to me? What is God saying to me in that passage? And then I move to the responding phase. And in this responding phase, we can begin to pray Scripture. Go with me on this for a moment, if you don't mind. We don't have to close our eyes. We're, we're just gonna, I'm just going to do this, and I want you to see how I might do this. you got the passage up there, you see it? The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. You might say, Jesus, you are God. Your Spirit guided you through your life. Lord Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Say, so you move it personal. Fill me with your spirit. Guide and direct my actions, my attitudes. And as you're allowing God to reveal himself, you're going, Lord, I, I think I'm beginning to see I need to not have this attitude toward the drivers on the road. Lord, I'm beginning to realize that maybe you don't like my attitude the way I'm treating my boss, talking them behind their back. Lord, maybe it's my spouse that I've been short and quick with. Guide and direct my actions, Lord. Continuing through there, you preach the good news to the poor, Jesus. Lord, help me to share my hope with anyone, not just those who are like me, not just those who can help me or, or help our church. Lord, help me to give the good news of your grace to the poor as well. Lord Jesus, you came to proclaim freedom to those who are imprisoned behind bars and to those who are imprisoned by oppression and illness and disease. Now listen how this, how this begins to move from reading and re reflecting to now this idea of revealing and responding. Jesus, how can I find ways to reach or to help or to care for those who are imprisoned? Oh, so all of a sudden you're going, wow, I don't like that kind of praying, Pastor. I don't want to go visit anybody in prison. See, what happens when you start praying Scripture is you begin to get spoken to about some things. Maybe, maybe God, it's not, not those who are in prison. Lord, help me reach and help and care for those who are sick was stricken with disease, not just physical blindness. Lord, who are you revealing to me that I should befriend and help? See how we move beyond, Lord Jesus did the, but God, how can I befriend someone? How can I become someone's help? Lord, speak to me. How do I know that I can help that person. Who is that person, Lord, that you want me to help? Father, help me to be sensitive to those who are in bad relationships or who are being abused. Open my eyes, Lord Jesus, to those who are oppressed and imprisoned. Lord, give me an opportunity to be grace to someone. Lord Jesus, you declared forgiveness and mercy and grace and helped all that you came in contact with. Help me, Lord Jesus, to receive and incorporate this grace into my own life. Lord, you know I'm tough on myself. I need to let your grace cover me. And Lord, help me then to become a provider of your hope and grace to others. 
Let me give forgiveness to those who have done wrong. Let me, Lord, not be the one who holds grudges. Lord, help me to be merciful to someone very specific today. Now, you see how you can take a passage of Scripture. It's talking about what Jesus said. And then you ju you're just praying those words and you're saying, God, help me now to take this. You see, so reading Scripture is important. And, and as you're reading, you might say, well, that's cool. That's who Jesus was. But, but, but don't just stay in the discipline of just reading. Move it into this relationship. God, what are you saying to me? How can I? And you know what he might say? It's not for you to go into someone's prison. It's not for you to be someone's sick helper. Maybe it's you're someone that's going to be listening to someone sharing their heart of pain. And you can just pray for them. And you can offer grace to them. You can offer Christ to them. See, so many times we're thinking, Pastor, I don't know how to share the Romans' road of salvation. I don't know the four spiritual laws. I don't know how to share my faith with others. That's okay. But as you start reading Scripture, and you're praying Scripture, and you're asking God to begin to work in you, He'll begin to open your eyes, and you'll begin to see. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. We're going to do this as well. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. I've had people say, how can you pray for more than a minute? I don't, I don't have much more to say. It's because you say, oh, things are going pretty good. I don't need anything today, God, you know. But when you start reading Scripture and then begin to pray Scripture, you can find yourself enjoying spending time in prayer. So what might we do as we read and reflect and reveal and respond with confession and action? You can begin by praising God. So, this, so if I just start reading at Ephesians 1, and all of a sudden I come across these verses, I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done in my life. Rodney just said, Lord, I'm so burdened, but Father, I see something good. I'm going to give you glory for that. I'm going to focus on that. Lord, thank you for my family and my friends or, or those that, that's what's going on in their lives. And thank you for my talents or my financial support or my health or my safety. We can just begin to praise God for all these things in our life. That's praise be to the God of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. And in this passage, verse 4, it says, He chose us in Him. Lord, <laughs> thank you for loving me and choosing me. Jesus, you created me. Wow. I look at me and I don't th see much lovable, Lord Jesus. But you see me and you love me. You chose me. See, w sometimes we need to speak positive things into our life, right? Uh, Paula always, always uh, remembers this. We had a preacher down in... in uh, in Mississippi when we were in the Air Force down there. His name was Jimmy Morris. It was Morris for those of us that would pronounce things normally, but if you're in Mississippi, it's Jimmy Morris. Big old boy, big old boy, country boy. One eye's looking this way and one eye's looking over this way, but it's all right. He was covering the whole sanctuary the whole time. He, he would just say, he says, you just got to tell yourself sometimes, he says, nobody else is going to do it. You just got to say, you're good looking. He says, I'm good looking. And you know, sometimes I think he's right. You just got to say, God loves me. Amen? Amen? God loves me. I'm all right. I don't care what Scott says about me. I'm all right. I don't care what my wife or my husband says about me. My kids might not call me blessed, but you know what? God loves me. He chose me. And sometimes we got to just say that to ourselves. Lord, we're not perfect. I see what I've been doing wrong. But Lord God, 
I know that you love me, and I want you to form your image in me. This passage talks about how he adopted us. <laughs> Sometimes we don't feel loved, wanted, or valued. Yet this passage says he chose us. He adopted me. Do you know what an adoption birth it just kind of happens and the love happens right but to be adopted look and he chose and he desired you for relationship and adoption he made us full privilege to say god thank you I, i'm not some beggar on the street i am your child you give me everything i need i'm fully privileged and Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy in this passage. He uses the term there at the very end, how much he has lavished on us. I would pray and I would say, God, I, I don't even know if I understand what that word lavishes means. I don't know. But whenever I think of your love for me, I feel like I'm standing out in a summer shower that's just pouring all over me. I'm so loved. Thank you, God. And you might say, Pastor, I don't feel very loved. You know what? Sometimes it's because we're trying to earn it in man's eyes or in the world's way of thinking instead of spending time in the Scripture, Lexio Divina, and through praying Scripture and seeing the truth, how much God loves us. It's right there in the Scripture. Now, often we don't know how to pray, don't we? We can start with just reading the Scripture. We can pray that the Holy Spirit would pour His Spirit and, and begin to water the seeds of the truth of Scripture in our heart and our mind. And then we can begin to speak back to Him His own words. God, I need Your guidance. I need Your vision. I need, I need direction, God. I need courage to walk in Your light. Lord, thank You. For all that he has done. Now you might say, Pastor, I still don't get it. That's all right. I still can't move my shoulder very far at all without wanting to cry and scream. So what are you saying? You know what? Three months from now, I'm going to move this shoulder further. Amen? Maybe in six months, I'm going to bowl again. Maybe. Maybe. I want to be able to throw a baseball overhand to my grandchild. I haven't been able to do that in years. But it's not happening today. All right? And you might say, Pastor, I want to be able to pray that way. Guess what? You may not be able to do it today. But you begin to practice reading the Scriptures. Reading. Reflecting. Asking God to reveal Himself and then respond to God in reading the Scriptures praying the scriptures. I guarantee you, not in six months or a year, I guarantee you in the next month you're going to find yourself way more in alignment with God. There's an old southern preacher who always used to say things like this. He says, you got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> I am not one of those guys. I can't figure that stuff out. But you know, that's a great saying, isn't it? So, so getting yourself in alignment with God is getting under the spout where the glory comes out. Spend, I just want to challenge you folks. I don't know how long it's been, two months, whatever we've been preaching through this idea of spiritual formation. I want to see Christ in you, shining through you. And it's through this process. There's other things we're going to be talking about in the days ahead, but this is the such of a critical start. Lord Jesus, as the worship team comes, Lord Jesus, we really need, we need your presence. And Father, we need to take some time. Lord, I took time at the dining room table today and I did my stretch. Oh Lord, the first time hurt so bad I didn't want to do it nine more times. And Lord, by time 10, I was a lot further than I was the first time. Lord, I pray that these, your people, 
would begin to take to heart all of these things I've been talking about and begin to practice your presence and find you growing in them forming yourself, shaping them into your image and that joy and power would become theirs. Lord Jesus, meet with us today. Let's stand. Let's sing this song. And be prepared if you have any questions. I want to I want to have some time for some questions here in just a moment.
Amen. You may be seated. God's grace is amazing. And as we, as we allow him to form his image into us, it's a beautiful thing as we go through that process. Anybody have any questions about these things I talked about today, this idea of praying scripture, anything? Uh, a few weeks ago, somebody asked me the question, Pastor, how do we pick a passage of scripture uh, to, to use for Lectio Divina? I really don't think you need to go and find a passage. As you start reading scripture, you come across a passage in which you feel like the Lord is speaking to you. You might only do it once a week. You might only do it twice a week. But you take that part of that passage, not the whole thing, not, not 12, 15, 20 verses, just three, four, five verses, and you begin to read and reflect and re allow the Holy Spirit to reveal himself and respond. And then, and then you decide, you know what, in the response portion of that, this is so significant. God, I want to now not just do this for my benefit. Lord, your word says this. And begin to pray his words. Think about this. Ask anything you want in accordance with his will, and you can have what you ask for. You want answers to prayer? Stop giving God your list only and start giving to him his word. And let his word begin to shape and form you. So any questions? Anything you guys want to ask about this? Anything at all? Don't want to take, just run by this. No questions. All right. It's okay. I told you this before, but I learned as an instructor, if nobody has any questions, you so totally baffle them that they don't have a clue what to ask. So, okay. I appreciate that. Or maybe the Lord has just worked so well you guys have a good clarity. I pray that you will try. Choose a passage by just going through it, just reading and then letting it happen. And then let Jesus begin to do something in you. Sometimes as believers, we want to get to a spirituality. We want to get to a relationship with God so that we can be done. Men sometimes do this with marriage. Sometimes we do this in marriage. We do all that we can to get to the wedding. We get the ring on the finger. Whew, we're done. And women come to me and they say things like, Pastor, this isn't the same man I married. Well, no, of course it's not. That man, he was trying to do everything he could to get you to the altar. Now he's got you there. Relationship with Jesus Christ is something that is growing and developing. He forms himself in you. And those with good marriages know it is great changing and getting to know each other as you continue to grow. Well, in just a moment, Joanne is going to be singing a song here to, uh, and, and then uh, Doug will be sharing the benediction after that. But as we talk about this idea of prayer, she's going to be sending us out with this idea that we're praying for you. But uh, again, I just want to continue to thank this congregation for their faithfulness and giving. Um, if you have a gift this week that you'd like to give, there's a church building right out there in the foyer in between the two exit doors. You can just place your gift in there. It's many of you, just today, I got out of the mailbox. People are using bill pay, and the, bill, the, the paychecks, uh, their, 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 their checks are coming here to the church. Others are writing checks and sending it to the church. You can use Facebook. Woodbridge NAS is our Facebook page. Click on the Learn More button. You can give that way. You can give through our website, woodbridgenaz.com. And uh, I really, really am not calling anybody out, but I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank Steve and Cindy and Bernie Ammon. They are there Tuesday night at 7 o'clock praying with me, and it's such an encouragement. Thank you for being there. I encourage you guys, check Facebook out right there at the top of Facebook. The very first post is the Zoom link for the Tuesday night prayer gatherings. And uh, it's a great time together. Thank you for being there. And, uh, you know, we haven't got a lot of volunteers for things, but if we are going to start doing children's church, we're going to need volunteers. Pastor Luke is back there in the back now. You can talk to him. We're going to need volunteers. So we're going to meet this week as a regathering team. We'll talk. We'll see what the board says next Monday. We'll see if we can move forward. But we're not going to begin to do things without a plan. Because we want to make sure we're not the church that makes national media for doing something dumb and having a big breakout. 
We're not going to do that. We're going to try to do everything with wisdom and knowledge and with the right resources. And we have some experience. We ran a daycare center here for quite a while, so we know some of the requirements already. So uh, just know that please see Pastor Luke uh, or contact him at children at woodbridgenaz.com if you'd like to sign up. Uh, we haven't got any volunteers to pull some weeds and things like that. We've got some weeds that need to be pulled in some of the playgrounds. So please uh, write. You can write to me, A. Birch, at woodbridgenaz.com. If you always forget that, you can do church at woodbridgenaz.com, and Luella can get that information. So if there's anything you'd like to help with, we appreciate that. So just here's the thing. We're praying for you, and we ought to be praying for each other. Thank you, Joanne, for bringing this song to our mind. And, and as she sings, just know that the Lord himself is speaking to you and wants to speak through you. And then at the end of the song, Doug will come for our conclusion.
Today's benediction comes from Romans 15, 5 through 7. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Have a great week. You're dismissed.